Greetings, friends around the world. Well, the good question that I want to ask you is, what is man? It's, it is amazing that we are dealing with all kinds of um, scientific theories, philosophical theories, philosophies of lives, ways of lives, uh, lifestyles, etc., etc., etc. Yet the crucial question of what is man is unanswered. What is man? Well, you see... There was once a man who exclaimed, I'm not an animal, I'm a human being. It was John Merrick, the so-called elephant man, called this because he was sadly deformed by a physical debility that twisted his features to loosely resemble that creature. Yes, my dear friends, John Merrick knew he was not an animal, but these days evolutionists are not so sure. They believe we are all animals mere descendants of primitive life forms that also spawned the apes and other creatures on this earth by, by the process of evolution. Well, the question is, are they correct? Is man an animal or an immortal soul in a mortal body, as most religionists would argue? Can we know? Well, happily, the answer is yes, we can know. Why can we know? Well, because the Bible plainly reveals the answer. The basic doctrine in the Bible about man is man is, a, is not a, an animal. Man is not an immortal soul housed in a fleshly body. Man is rather a totally mortal being, but with a spiritual component, the spirit in man. The spirit in man gives all of us the power of conscious human minds and free will, and coupled with God's Holy Spirit, it forms the converted Christian mind. Of course, the usual teachings of this world are diametrically opposite to what the Bible reveals about men. The non-biblical misconceptions about this subject form strong emotional attachments for scientists and religionists alike. Many scientists, of course, believe in the unproven theory of evolution and think men to be merely the most advanced link in the unbroken chain of animal life that sprang spontaneously from chemical soup by blind chance. Religionists, on the other hand, cling with equal vehemence to the belief that man is an immortal soul housed in an evil fleshly body, waiting to be freed at death and serve out eternity in blissful happiness in heaven or endless agony in hell. Surprisingly, both theories are wrong. Of course, the theory of evolution does not make the pretense of originating with the Bible. The proponents of the immortal soul theory, on the other hand, assume their belief has its roots in God's word, but they too are incorrect. For astoundingly, the belief in the immortal soul arose not from sound biblical doctrine taught or written by the prophets or apostles, but from ancient heathen Egypt. Then it was adopted by pagan Greek philosopher like Plato, and finally, it infiltrated traditional Christianity through church fathers who themselves believed the teaching, but who had adopted it from pagan Greek philosophy, not from the Bible. No wonder the Apostle Paul wrote to us, to beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. But we need not rest on the historical record alone, for the doctrine of the immortality of the soul falls shattered to the ground in light of the plain teachings of God's word. So, what are the Bible teachings about what is man? Well, to be sure, the Bible does indeed use the word soul, never the phrase immortal soul, however, just the word soul. But the word soul is merely a translation of the Old and the New Testaments of other words from both Hebrew and Greek. We must look to these languages and the context in which the words are used if we are to understand the word translated soul in modern versions. To begin, notice that man became a living soul according to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And observe that this verse does not say man has a soul, but that man is a soul. Further, the English word translated soul here and in other places in the Hebrew word nefesh, which means a living, breathing creature, it thus includes both animal and human life. Now the very same word nefesh 
in Hebrew refers to animals in Genesis chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, and verse 24, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, and in Genesis chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 10, 12, and 15, where it is, it is translated in those verses, creature, as well as in Genesis 1, verse 30, and Genesis 9, verse 4, and Leviticus 11, verse 10, and Leviticus 17, verse 11, and other scriptures. Not only does the word translated soul in the Old Testament not imply immortality, nor even superiority to animals, but it is even used to represent dead bodies in Leviticus chapter 21, 1, and in verse 11, as well as in Numbers chapter 6, verse 6, and verse 11, and elsewhere. And twice in the same Bible chapter does God directly say, when speaking of human beings, the soul who sins shall die. This is in the book of Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, and verse 20 respectively. Now the Greek word translated soul in the New Testament is used in a similar sense, referring only to physical mortal life, such as example is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. Jesus himself proclaimed that the soul can be destroyed in hell in Matthew 10 verse 28. The Apostle John shows men are not immortal souls with his statement that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. This is in 1 John chapter 3 verse 15. Paul proclaimed man's mortality with the words, the wages of sin is death, Romans 6 23. So the wages of sin is death, not immortal life in hell. Now clearly, the doctrine of the immortal soul is a myth foisted upon the Christian world from paganism. But more must be said about this important topic of what man is. For although man is merely a mortal soul, a mortal living, breathing creature like an animal, man is nonetheless clearly not a mere beast like a monkey or a goat or a ho horse. For men, unlike the animals who have been made each after his own kind, as we are told in Genesis 1.25, for man is made in God's own image and likeness, verse 26, and is therefore after the God kind and with God's general appearance. Also, even more importantly, man has a spiritual component, the spirit in man, which, when combined with the human brain, produces the human mind with its unique self-awareness and capacity for free will character development. Now, as the book of Job says, it is a spirit in man that gives them understanding. Job 32 verse 8 is from the, this translation is from the Jewish Publication Society translation. Likewise, the prophet Zechariah confirms that God forms the spirit of man within him. Zechariah 12 verse 1. Paul declares that man has a spirit within him, a human spirit that gives man his unique human mind. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 11 says, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. But caution is in order here, dear friends, because it is tempting for some who have believed in the immortal soul theory to conclude that the spirit in man is merely another term for the immortal soul and that the whole argument is simply one of semantics. Well, not so. Because this spirit essence is not an immortal soul. The spirit in the man is not the man. It's something in the man. It has no life of itself. For the life of a man is in the air he breathes and in the blood that circulates, that breathes through his body. This is Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 and Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. It does not of itself see or hear for even a blind or deaf person though deprived of one of his senses, is altogether human. And at death, it has no consciousness of itself, for it sleeps, as it is revealed in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 30, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51, and in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. Yet, the spirit in man imparts the human qualities of mind to the man. Read 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 through 12, and, like a tape recorder, forms a permanent record of the qualities of mind and character built by a man during his lifetime. Much as a used tape is stored life, lifelessly on a shelf until activated for use in a recorder, so does the spirit of man return to God who gave it 
after death. It remains with God until the resurrection. Life is again given to a person, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. But those whom God has called and chosen, and they alone, receive yet an additional component added to their makeup. It is not the spirit of man, for man has that naturally and automatically. It is another spirit, the spirit of God himself, which is given to those who have been called and properly baptized with the laying on of hands, as written in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. This spirit, with capital S, this spirit begets us spiritually, much like a human is begotten physically in his mother's womb, First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. It joins with our own spirit, Romans 8, verses 16 and 17, and provides both the fruits of qualities or qualities of God himself in us and the ability to understand not merely the things of men, but spiritual knowledge from God, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Further, once we become converted and we are filled with that spirit with capital S, we have the seed and the down payment of eternal life within us, which, unless rejected later by us, will indeed blossom into full eternal life at Christ's return. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1 through 5. How incredible that we, mere humans, may have within us the mind of God and the very knowledge of God. Now, of course, key verses to remember when it comes to the question of what is man. The key verses, these verses, you know, it helps us and, and the capacity we have to connect with God through our spirit of man. It all helps us understand to remember the most important scriptures and topics. So here are a few. Genesis 2, 7, man is a soul. Genesis 1, 20, the same word used as soul in Genesis 2, 7 is here translated as living creature. Ezekiel chapter 80, verses 4 and 20, souls can die. Job 32, 8, Zechariah 12, 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, there is a spirit in man. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, the spirit in man gives man the unique powers of human mind, and the spirit of God in man gives him a godly, spiritually enlightened mind. In conclusion, dear friends, the incredible and true picture is now complete. Man is not an animal, nor an immortal soul housed in a fleshly body, but is rather a totally mortal being, but with a spiritual component, the spirit in man, which gives him the power of conscious human mind and free will, and which couples with God's Holy Spirit to form the converted Christian mind. Yes, John Merrick, the elephant man under quotation mark, was right. Neither he nor the rest of us are animals, but rather human beings made in the image of God with the hope of eternal glory. What a wonderful and good news in this decaying and dying world. Until next time, goodbye friends.